Hi there. So my name is Brooke and I'm the director of the Wild Temple School. And I wanted to share with you that for years I have been bringing people to practice yoga outside into nature because I always recognize that nature is this just powerful healer. Um, the elementals help to realign us to our authentic self and awaken us to our own true nature, as well as just the aromatics and the warmth of the sun, maybe the cooling mist surrounding the area. All of these things, when they touch our body, bring us home back to our nature selves, our creature selves, really. And it's for this reason, I wanted to give a window to yoga practitioners as to why working with flower essences help us to connect to nature and why that is so important and, and beneficial in our yoga practice. So with yoga, the goal, one of the goals is really to have a more easeful and fulfilled life, to feel more content, happier, to be creative, right? To feel good in our bodies. And the idea of getting out into nature, people are realizing now is actually really healthy. It's very beneficial. We are feeling more connected, more in tune to the cycles, seasons, the rhythms. We are breathing fresh air, right? All of these things help to support our physical body. Now, when we work with the plants, we can work with plant in like tea, tincture, our, our herbal matter in a way that we normally recognize it in mainstream society, even aromatherapy, right? And all of this tends to the physical body which is extremely beneficial, right? But the flowers, the flower essences are subtle vibrations. So they work on the subtle realms of our subtle body, our energy, our mind, our emotion, our spirit. And so I wanted to give you a little window into what this could look like for you as a yoga teacher or practitioner and how beneficial it can be for you. And I'll break it into just three segments for this little video. And the first being that, what if you knew more about nature when you went outside to practice or just went on hikes, right? So what if I were to share to you that there are particular plants out there that can help you relax more and help you feel more at ease, more content. I know some people actually don't feel very comfortable in nature. So what if you all of a sudden step out and you're like, oh my gosh, these allies that I know this being, and you start to have a reciprocity of connection with them. You start to vibe with them, you know, maybe even feeling their language, so to speak, the green language we call it in, in alchemy. So one of the ways that connecting to nature and knowing about the plants can bring deeper relaxation and ease would be for which specific plants actually have that as their medicine, right? That's one thing that I want to go over. Second thing is for feeling protected. So a lot of people on the yogic path become more and more sensitive, more and more sensitive to your environment, attuned to certain relationships, you know, like maybe having people around you that are more dominant than you, that you start to feel less than and maybe lose your voice or you lose your um, sense of empowerment. Maybe even you lose your thoughts, <laughs> right? So we have plants that can help increase that feeling of a higher vibration, higher soul strength within you, stronger empowerment. That is a form of protection. So just building your own sense of empowerment and light, and that can help to protect you. And then the third would be on our yogic journey, we're really looking for inspiration and more creativity and to tap into the beauty the vast beauty and intelligence of nature that really help us to be shiny, sparkly individuals in the world. And so we have plants that can help with that creativity and with that inspiration. So I wanna give you a few examples specifically in the realms of yoga. So let's start back with the first one, right? So we want to find the definition of asana, sukham and stiram, this steadiness, stira and comfort or ease, sukham. And so 
maybe we're not finding it in our lives. We're overwhelmed, we're trying to teach all of these classes, create all of these practices, have the clients, meet the needs of the family, right? Meet the bills, all the things, finances, all the changes that are going on with algorithms and AI technology. How do we find more ease, right? One of the ways is yes, we can step into nature and a lot of people are finding benefit from just that. But what if you knew a little more about what nature is, you know, the gurus of nature, which I consider to be the plant kingdom, right? These little, little teachers and guides. So we have uh, an example is our, our tree groves. So if you live in an area that has oak tree or an oak tree, single strand, single stand of oak or a grove of oak trees, you can practice, meditate, even just sit by the trees, just vibe with the trees. Oak medicine is very grounding, very stabilizing, but it's replenishing to the person who has to work a lot, maybe holds a couple jobs, maybe is an entrepreneur and is in the front lines, has to use you know all of their creative juices throughout the days, not able to ask for help that very often because they can do it quicker, faster, or it's their project they're working on. Oak medicine replenishes in a way that refills and refuels that particular person so you can relax, so you can find that ease again. If you're on the West Coast, for example, madrone. So madrone is the mother, and it is a very nurturing tree. And the family that's also in madrones are manzanita. And these really beautiful teachers are really dedicated towards helping heal the body. So when you are looking at somatics as therapeutics and how is the body feeling and is the body nourished, being in a grove of, of madrone trees or manzanita, they're kind of tree shrubs, this can bring your awareness to your body consciousness to make sure you're eating correctly in a way that's a nice rhythm for you, bigger meals in the middle of the day, et cetera. And also having compassion, forgiveness, and love for the body, much like a mother would for their child. So these plants, just being with them, you can take the essence, but just getting out and meeting them, this is what they teach us, right? These, this is their particular medicine. We all have unique medicine. Every sentient being on this planet has a unique dharma. And learning about the plants teaches you what their dharma is about. And when you sit with them, you're building a relationship where that relationship, much like with a friend and their unique medicine just inspires that within you. That's what we're doing in the field, in nature. So say you live in India, you know, or Florida or Mexico, the banyan tree and oh my goodness, banyan groves, these beautiful canopies of what look to be upside down trees. Now, when you meditate under banyan, which are really the sages trees too, it's in, in our tradition, the, the sages, specifically Dakshinamurti, who is the original seer of Sri Vidya, has his seat in the banyan tree. And when you practice under the banyan, you notice a shift of perspective where the true tenet of Tantra, as within, so without, as above, so below, this mirroring starts to actualize. You feel it, you see it, you are it, you know it. And there's so much teaching here that unravels all the old thoughts and the beliefs so you can expand your vision into this new reality. And with that, you relax and you see things differently. You're not worrying as much. You're not doubting as much. Your mind expands and you start to grow. So these are all um, little examples for practitioners to find ease and relaxation. And I could talk about thousands more, <laughs> honestly, I really could. But the second topic I'd like to talk about is protection. Because I hear just over and over again, especially people beginning the path of yoga. So if you are an advanced teacher and you wanna put yourself back into the shoes of the beginner, remember how hard it was to start to align your body um, into these rhythms called asana where we're clearing out the system. And then all of a sudden, like the toxins are gone and you're more and more sensitive to 
you know, that um, red meat or that bag of potato chips or whatever it might be on a personal level, more sensitive to loud abrasive individuals, maybe your nervous system, you're, you're recognizing where the habits have been unhealthy and you're not quite sure how to adjust. The plants really help us. So we have specific plants for this in the flower essence world, also in the herbal world, but I'm gonna to speak to you in this like this flower essence way, where if you just sit with the plants, my number one favorites for protection are, are the yarrows. So yarrow, Y-A-R-R-O-W, we have white yarrow, which helps with environmental protection. So a lot of people are really sensitive to computers, EMF radiation, um, you know, there's a lot of talk of like 5G, all the things, all of the busyness of technology can be abrasive to a sensitive individual. And so yarrow comes around and it's like it re-knits your auric fabric to protect you. You can take white yarrow for um, if you've been around people and you want to cleanse their energies out of your body or pink yarrow is really for the empaths when you're pulling in their thoughts and feelings and you all of a sudden after you know a long day teaching maybe you forgot to tell people to not have their feet towards you in shavasana you have just absorbed all their crap right so you can take pink yarrow and it really cleanses their stuff out of you and it helps you to build your strength, your aura. So in our tradition, we work with practices called Samikarana, which is this breathing meditation where you're kind of tracking along the spine and tracking the energy around you, and then leading us into what's called Vishoka meditation. So this pranayama, which you're really feeling your auric field, the plant supports this action. It's going to help boost your vibrancy, your vital force, and it will help to shield or recreate that aura that is naturally all around you by almost like an energetic knitting of that fabric. Um, I would say another, another plant for protection is elder. And we know this in the herbal realm. We know we knew this with our syrups we had in 2020. We had this huge elder unleash, you know, elder syrup elder um, elder flower, elder berry, elder elixirs, whichever part of the plant you're working with, right? We have these tea tonics, syrup tonics. People are doing mocktails with elder. You can just sit with the plant and you can feel its grandmotherly like protection. It used to be um, ordained, not ordained. Um, I think it was King James he decreed, that's the word, he decreed that everyone had to plant an elder in their yards because elder is an apothecary. It has so much beneficial constituents within it for protecting against viruses, just boosting the immune system filled with antioxidants, all of these things that it is a strong protective medicine. And you can look at the doctrine of signatures, the plant itself, look at the flowers. They look like these little arrows. <laughs> so these little arrows kind of shooting away any pathogens. Now, flower essence wise, it's really helpful protecting you from dominant forces, dominant people, especially with the power of being able to use your voice, your voice to protect yourself which is really important. We have to be able to speak up for ourselves because people can't read our minds and people will just go with the flow. And then we fall into this victim consciousness, right? So elders like, uh-uh, got you. Many stories and lore about elder. I have many experiences I've worked with elder, um, seeing uh, people on like leaders, leaders having miscommunication where one will be more dominant than the other and the other less dominant one will feel restricted and unable to speak in a way that they feel seen. And so in that partnership of leading, say, a retreat or a business, I've seen this in a number of different scenarios, they can feel victimized, like the other person is taking over, smothering them. They could take elder and realize, oh, I just need to actually speak up and stand my ground and claim my space as sharing this adventure, co-leadership, right? 
And it does so in a really nice way where the person who feels they need a little extra support can get that, right? So it's not quite armoring as much as it is increasing your intelligence and your own vibration to not need protection. Right? I'm a big fan of that, big fan of that. Kind of similar to, I don't love cleansing, but I love nourishing. I don't love feeling the fear of needing to protect myself, but I love feeling the strengthening of not needing to protect myself because I'm a vibrant ball of light. And I love to help other people get there too. The last one I would say is that when we're in nature, one of the reasons we go out into nature, we draw nature, we sit by the trees, we take walks, we go paddle boarding on lakes, we camp, we hang out with friends is for inspiration, rest, right? But also inspiration, creativity comes in. And we can imbibe in this in ways that maybe when we feel a little blocked um, or life feels dull, Maybe it's coming out of a long winter and you're like, oh, I need some support, just motivating, waking me up and inspiring me. We have plans for this too. And a couple that I'll share, I'll give you an example. So I was in Colorado and I was um, on a retreat, on a yoga retreat. And my colleague and dear friend, she was co-facilitating, or actually she was um, assisting the teacher And what I realized with this bright and shiny being was that she was really gloomy, (laughs) this retreat, and she wanted to hide a lot. She had been giving a lot to the world and she was exhausted and just needed to retreat a little bit. And so she was kind of holed up in her room. And I remember walking around because it's beautiful Colorado. And I walked around and I saw sunflowers in bloom and I decided to make an essence. And I just sat with it and I meditated with it. And I realized, oh yeah, I'm going to give this to everyone in the house because we, a lot of us were, were sharing this space and attending this retreat together. And again, one of them was the assistant. And I shared the medicine with everyone. And it was like this light bulb went off of radiance of like, oh, here I am. This is me. And this is the medicine of sunflower where if our radiance has taken back seat, right? it helps to bring it back in a way that's not dominating. Our solar personalities can sometimes shine so much light that they blind they blind everyone, right? Because we're big old egos in the room or they diminish other people's light because we're big old egos in the room. Now, if you think about sunflowers, sometimes they get so heavy that they start to dip and they're dipping down towards the earth. This is a signature of this humility, a humble quality of this plant. So sunflower brings a humble radiance. It's like a positive divine masculine. If we're to look at it through the Jungian lens of masculine being radiance, feminine being more um, receptive, right? So when you are uh, an entrepreneur or you need to market, you need to get on social media to you know, say, I'm here, I'm out here, and you're not feeling that inspiration or creativity, you can work with sunflower to imbibe the sun and you're just shining out you. Another one that is very similar but very different is buttercup. So buttercup is a very tiny flower. And yet if you remember the old game as a child, you'd stick the flower underneath your chin. And if you could see the reflection of yellow on your chin, then you liked butter. So think about this in a shiny kind of personification where we tend to, some people, this is their constitution. It might be the third child, a middle child. It might be that you were born on a no moon day and you were never seen by your parents, right? Or your family, you have a big family, you were never seen, never heard. You always feel invisible. Buttercup can help to increase your shine. And it does so by increasing your inspiration and your creativity and your uniqueness. And then you realize, oh, I have purpose here too. I'm meant to be here too. And that alone is inspiring. So there are lots more for inspiration and creativity, but for the comparison right there, the small little buttercup or the more in in your face, sunflower, um, each person resonates with different plants in different ways. But these plants, at, in my experience, are amazing allies for understanding our psyche, 
our habit patterns and how we think, our upbringing and our conditions, when we are dismantling the samskaras, these very you know deeply ingrained habits, we can absolutely use the support of working with the flowers to help excavate those old grooves and kind of churn the soil so you start to do things differently. Flower essences are in the terms of the Yoga Sutras, chapter two, sutra one, tapas vadyaya ishvada pramadana. They aid us in both tapas because they're disciplined, fiery, but soft remedies. They're prana in a bottle that lead us to svadhyaya, which is this self-inquiry that lead us to giving it up to grace. We start to realize when we are in the groves, in the mountains, forest yogis, wherever we are, and we know these plants, we start to just give back into this trust of, I don't need to do it all. I'm showing up as best as I can, and I have these allies. And then that moves us into Ishvara Pranadana, giving it to source, giving it to the creator, to grace, to love, to the greater intelligence. Ishvari Pranidana. So I hope that this little video was supportive for you. Again, an invitation to learning the plants with me. I have many programs and more to come that bring us into a better relationship with nature by learning about the plants directly and how we can work with them in our lives. They are here with us as co-creators in this existence. And so why not get to know them? right? Why not befriend them? And as a result, have more ease, have more inspiration, feel more protected, bring on your light, help make this world a better place. Right. All right. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you have a lovely day.